for those of you that are interested in getting into development, how do we even get started? Let me talk to you about what types of land development there are out there. I really like to simplify things whenever possible. So there's, to me, really three kinds of land development, right? It's buying raw land, doing a land assembly, or conversion of some kind, right? Here's what a lot of people think of when they think of the stages of land development. You buy a piece of land, and you go get it figured out, and then you start construction, right? Yeah, there's about uh, this many more steps in there, right? So, these are all the different phases of land development. Land acquisition, rezoning, development permit. If you're building a subdivision, you'd be servicing lots. Then you're getting your building permit, and then you're doing construction, right? Now, why are there little arrows between each of those different things? Uh, what's a development permit as opposed to site plan approval? I, I was just gonna say, I should change this for Ontario because in Ontario we say site plan approval. Okay. In Alberta and some other places they say development permit, it's the same thing. So development permit equals site plan approval. Why is there a little arrow on these ones? Can't move forward without getting the first one step done. That's true. Could offer an exit. We have an increased evaluation for this. Yeah, absolutely. That's a point where you could exit the transaction and make money. You could buy a piece of land and you could get it rezoned and you could sell it. In fact, many people solely focus on this from a land development perspective. It's called flipping paper. Yeah, and it's a great strategy and I'll teach you how to do it if that's what you want to do. If you never want to put a shovel in the ground on a development project, you don't have to. You could literally find a piece of land, get it rezoned, and it doesn't even have to be raw land. You could buy commercial land with a commercial building on it, get it rezoned for residential, and sell it to somebody else. Because what can they do then? Once it's rezoned, they can go and get site plan approval, or they can go get a development permit, and then they could sell it to somebody else. And then someone could buy it at site plan approval, and they can go get a building permit, and they could sell it to somebody else. And then who wants to buy a project that's building permit ready and start right away? Who would that, who would that be enticing to? Builders. Builders, absolutely. People have construction companies. Are they hurting right now? Yeah. For sure. Do they need to keep their people employed? Absolutely, unless they want to lose them, right? And would a developer or a builder potentially be interested in building a multifamily building that they could actually finance with CMHC? Absolutely. Yeah, question. I assume there is a percentage appreciation of this property along the way. Uh -huh. Would you care to speculate at what point is the optimum profit? Great, great question. Where is the most profit? Rezoning? Rezoning and Bottom or top of that? Who says bottom? Who says top? <laughs> All right. This is the biggest profit margin right here. For sure. The cost of construction is pretty much the cost of construction. Right? You're going to vary a little bit. Maybe you can save a few dollars here and there. But it costs what it costs to build a building. Right now, we can do value engineering and all kinds of different things, but essentially, that's where there's the smallest room for error is up here. Where's the most risk? Bottom. Top. Uncertainty. Why in the bottom? Uncertainty. Is it guaranteed that you can get a property rezoned? No. Not even close. There is no guarantee that you can get a property rezoned. City council goes through an election. There's a new mayor. There's new councillors. Your project that was on the table before that the previous administration was all in favor of, now all of a sudden maybe the constituents in that neighborhood it voted that mayor in because they're opposed to that development project and it gets canceled right there in rezoning. Right? So this is the most risky area. That's why you make the most amount of profit there. So here's what I would suggest, yes? What do you mean by rezoning? 
So rezoning would be something where, like, let's like say you're buying a piece of land and it's, it's zoned as farmland, for instance. You can't go and build a subdivision on farmland. It's not zoned for it, right? So there's zoning like residential zoning, commercial zoning, industrial zoning, right? So your properties have to be zoned for what you want to do. So you can change the zoning through a zoning amendment, right? And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but that's the process of getting a property rezoned, okay? You can also be in a residential zone, but maybe your density isn't what you need. Right? So when we talk about land assembly, you could have five residential properties, but they're only zoned for single family dwellings. You could assemble those five lots and you could get the zoning change from, you know, a, 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 a one density to like a five density, something like that, right? Which would allow you to build a 10, 12, 15 story tower. So that's kind of through that rezoning process. Great question. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I would suggest for those of you that are relatively new to development, which I think is almost everybody in the room. Don't start here and finish here for your first development project. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot to learn and there's a lot of places where you can screw up and to be honest, there's a massive chance that you're gonna lose money, right? I would suggest as a new developer, starting somewhere in the middle, and then working your way to the end of the process, right? So picking up something that perhaps is site plan approved already, maybe you can take that through the building permit process and then you can build it, something like that. Then you understand that later part of the process. Now you can say, let's go back one phase or let's go back another phase, right? You can kind of step down because you understand the second part of it at least. Right, and you figured that out. But I always suggest that that's kind of your first thing you want to take on. Now, uh, I like I say, I, I teach this land acquisition to rezoning, and lots of my students are looking to flip paper. But I think my true expertise really comes in when we talk about construction. Uh, and getting projects out of the ground. I love construction. I love seeing buildings coming out of the ground. I love building units. So although there's a tremendous amount of uh, wealth that can be created in that land acquisition to rezoning, it's not what I do, but it is a great strategy if you wanna do that. If you have no aspirations of building anything and maybe uh, development's gonna be your side hustle, you know, then land and rezoning is a fantastic way to make incredible, uh, like I say, incredible wealth without actually having to build anything right and it's relatively in terms of you know if you can buy a piece of land that's not a huge investment or that it's actually operating as something else maybe it's operating as a commercial property and it and generates income and it supports itself there's less risk in that perspective yeah somebody other question there what's the shortest time you've seen in your experience from end to end yeah great question so here let me tell you this i was out in calgary a couple weekends ago and uh one of my friends uh, carlene who's uh, in my mastermind she presented to the group and um, in Calgary right now, massive housing crisis, the same as what's going on here in Toronto. They're approving zoning applications in three months. So you can tell when there's a housing crisis and there's a need for housing. So she's taking a, a re regular single family uh, lot, corner lots, they're always looking for corner lots. And what they do is they get them rezoned. They can do that in three to four months get their development permit, um, and in six months, they're applying for a building permit. And they're in the ground, and they're usually done in eight to 10 months, right? Uh, I know I'm making it sound like super easy. <laughs> it's not like just like, yeah, you just go and you get a, you know, that it's like there's money and time and energy and everything like that. But they're building four stacked towns or four side-by-side -side townhomes with uh, basement apartments in each one. And that's how many units now? Eight units. Can we do MLI select financing with CMHC on eight unit? For sure, right? Yeah, so uh, like you can look at Toronto and I would encourage you to look at Ontario right now. There's, I think, tremendous opportunity everywhere in Ontario. But if you wanna look at other provinces, there may be quicker zoning approvals and things like that in other areas, right? Yeah. When you say there's lots of opportunities in Ontario, I'm actually a little surprised you're saying that. Partly yes and no. Are there where in the province do you see greater opportunities? Not just the GTA, or maybe your answer is the GTA. I mean, I I, I love Toronto. Yeah. You know, I just think it's not for everybody because of the price point. But I think when when you look at the when you look at the supply demand, 
that's going on here and you look at the zoning that's happening here, I, I think there's tremendous opportunity. But there's also opportunity, you know, in any other place that, that really needs development, right? So I think that you could, you could pick, I mean, just get on the 401, right? And, and you know, uh, London, uh, Niagara Falls, Hamilton, like they're, they're all great markets for, for zoning from, from that perspective. And they're also great from a rental perspective, right? I guess the question is like, what kind of tenant demographic do you want? There's all those other sort of factors, right? But I think right now with, with Bill 23, with MLI Select Financing, with all the things that are happening, that's why I really love Ontario, but other provinces are doing amazing things as well. If you're interested in learning how to be a developer, you can always check out my website at darrenvoros.com for all of my course details. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.